Because this external clarity is the only meaning of Scripture available openly to all and to everyone, it is the only meaning that can be used for communal authority. The exercise of such communal authority risks tyranny unless law and gospel are properly distinguished. The internal clarity of Scripture is the Reformer's answer to the tyranny which is imposed when the external clarity of Scripture is misused by the confusion of law and gospel and or by the conflation of the two kingdoms. This internal clarity is the affirmation that the Bible is the Word of God, Jesus Christ himself, in the words of God. The internal clarity of Scripture is not a principle, but a person. By their receiving this internal clarity, in other words, by their receiving Jesus Christ himself, each believer is a judge over doctrine. This clarity liberates and sets free in contrast to the tyranny of a misused external clarity because this internal clarity is the direct result of the proper application of the pronoun for you. Jesus Christ, for you. It is by necessity personal and not generally available. The internal clarity, because of this personal quality, is not available publicly and is not appropriate for communal authority. Third, we consider these paired concepts. Scripture interprets itself. That is, Scripture does the interpreting itself. This is often confused with the perspicacity of Scripture which simply means that the more understandable parts of Scripture can be used to interpret the less understandable parts. Lutherans have used Scripture's perspicacity as a way to let Scripture speak for itself. Scripture interprets itself, on the other hand, is the way that God's Word turns the tables upon the interpreter. Instead of the interpreter as the active subject taking up Scripture to be the object of the interpreter's scrutiny, Scripture itself becomes the acting subject, the interpreter, which acts upon its object, the one previously thought to be the interpreter. God's Word then reveals itself about the hearer, the reader, and about God. You could say the Word clarifies the situation. The last concept we'll take up is the two natures of the Word. First off, in many in many church constitutions. The Word of God is defined as incarnation, proclamation, and revelation, Scripture. Jesus Christ, God's Word made flesh, is God's Word. This Word is the living and beating heart of Scripture. The delivery of this Word is the purpose of proclamation for God's Word tradition to be the viva box, the viva content of the preaching's box. Voice. The living content of the preacher's voice must be the life of Christ as set forth in the Revelation Scripture. Here's a sample of how some Lutherans have confessed it. We believe, teach, and confess that Jesus Christ alone as Lord and Savior and the gospel as the power of God for the salvation of all who believe in him. Jesus Christ, true God, Son of the Father from eternity, and true man born of the Virgin Mary, is the Word of God incarnate, through whom everything was made, and through whose life, death, and resurrection alone God delivers from sin, death, and the devil, and inaugurates a new creation. God's Word as in our nation. Secondly, the oral proclamation of God's name
message to us as both law and gospel is the Word of God, revealing judgment and mercy in the person and work of Jesus Christ through whom God, by His grace alone, was pleased to reconcile the Word and all things to Himself. God's Word as proclamation. And thirdly, the canonical scriptures of the Old and New Testament are the Word of God inspired by the Holy Spirit speaking through their authors. They are the clear and certain testimony of God's revelation centering in Jesus Christ. <coughs> through them, the Holy Spirit speaks to us, creating and sustaining Christian faith and fellowship. God's Word as revelation. Scripture. You may notice that all three of these, that Jesus Christ, in each one of these, God's Word as the Incarnation, Proclamation, and Revelation, has two natures, divine and human, which are inseparable. Think here of the communication of attributes. Just as Incarnation is God's Word made vulnerable, so too are proclamation and revelation. God's Word vulnerable to rejection, to abuse, even to being silent. This is the Word's vulnerability and its authority, the authority of the Word itself, is the same authority that Jesus Christ claimed upon the cross, the authority to forgive sinners. This is the power which, Jesus, which God gives through Jesus Christ to His Church. To all those who have faith in the Holy Spirit in the heart, to all those who are gathered, who are gathered in those places assembled around the gospel preached rightly and the sacraments given in accordance with that gospel, the authority is to preach the word as both law and gospel, so that the Holy Spirit might work faith when and where it pleases. 